Hey, so I woke up this morning and got a freaking nail in my tire. It's flat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my green apron on so you know what that means. It's time for some XC250 maintenance. You know how I always say, like, make sure you use your factory service manual, blah, blah, blah. Well, they don't really tell you how to change a tire in your factory service manual. And to, t to tell you the truth, I suck at changing tires. So this is definitely going to be for entertainment purposes only. And so you guys can see what tools I use. Um, and I'm going to add another challenge to this one. I'm only going to use the tools that I have on my bike for changing tires because I can't remember when the last time I changed one of these tires was. Um, so I'm only gonna use the tire the tire changing tools that I have on my bike. I'm not gonna cheat, I'm not gonna use anything else. And this is just kinda to show you that if crap hits the fan and you need to change your tire, do you have everything you need on your bike to actually change it and be successful at it? Um, so, yeah, pretty much I'm just going to go ahead and do that. There's going to be a lot of time lapses in this one because I don't want to let you guys hear how frustrated I am. I, I suck at changing tires. I've probably changed like six tires, and every single one of them has been ridiculously a stupid task. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy. You, you, take, the, you take the old tire off, you put the new tube in, you, you put the tire on, and then there you go. You fill it with air, right? No, it's always way harder than that. But anyways... Well, let's just get to it. I'll show you the tools that I use and then, uh, yeah, we'll just get to it. Oh, another thing, I think I only have a front tire, or a, I only have a front tire, I only have a front tube, uh, a front spare tube, so I heard you can jam that into the back of your rear tire and then you should be fine. I've never tested it, so today is a great day to test it along with everything else. Um, I don't carry a patch kit, I only carry spare tubes, so that's kind of the way that I do it. If I'm if I'm changing something, if I'm doing that job, I'm going to make sure that, hey, like, it's a fresh tube, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it would suck taking your tire off, as frustrating as it would be, patching it and then waiting, and then just realizing that your patch didn't hold. But anyways, let's go. All right, so one thing that I do when I change my rear tire is I take everything off of the back of the bike. So all of my camping stuff, all of my panniers, my roto packs. Oh, speaking of roto packs, um, I pull everything off of my bike just because this stuff is all extra weight. Now that I can't grab that off of here, I put you down. It's all extra weight, and it's dangerous if you're working on your back tire. And you know how crappy would it be if you're you have your back tire off and then you still have all your luggage on there and then all of a sudden your bike tips over when you don't have a back tire all of a sudden you're you have 200 pounds actually you know 400 pounds of dead weight lying on the ground you know what i mean so i pull everything off like this is this is this is like eight pounds right here so um pull all that off and then that way i'm you know i set myself up for success and i reduce the amount of danger that i put myself into but now that I have everything off of the bike, these are kind of like the basic tools that I need. Uh, all of it is just sitting right down here. I have my Tusk uh, tire uh, tube set off of my fender pack. Uh, I have my Wolfman tool roll. I have my little Enduro trail stand. I have a bungee cord. I have a monkey mat right there. And then I have a little air compressor. So that's all the stuff that I think I need. I ha Once again, I haven't done this in a long time, so We'll figure out if that is exactly everything I need, but um, I think it's everything that I need uh, to get this job going. 
and sorry about spinning around I'm trying to get the best light <laughs> scrub um, but that should be everything that I need I'll go ahead and dig it on into it right now from what I remember about this kit is these two tire irons suck um, but I always keep them on there just in case I need to uh, give them out to somebody else on the road but there's my spare tube uh, I think I'm gonna use these Stockton tire irons and um, the great thing about those is they have the inserts for my my axles and they have a uh, insert for the uh, rim lock. Uh, I also have two more two more tire irons that are made by I can't remember who makes these, but um, those ones are also in there just in case I need to make any repairs. But for the most part, I'm going to be using these two Stockton ones. Um, let me. That's all empty now, so I can go ahead and toss that aside. Uh, what this is, is uh, it's just like a tiny mat. It's usually used for camping. It's just so I can have like a clear workstation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flap this out. Um, flap this out. It's a nice little workspace. Keeps your spot clean and stuff. I should have flapped it out earlier, but hey, better late than never. So, there you go. Keep myself organized. I'm going to need those very soon. Um, and let me think what else I have. I have my little uh, homemade enduro trail stand. I'll show you guys how to use that. Um, and then I have the straps for it on my bike along with the little, um, oh, here are the straps. I have the straps for that and then I have my, my bungee cord to secure it. But I'll show you guys how that works. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it helps if you have some knee pads because you're going to be on your knees for a long time. For those of you who have never changed a rear tire, uh, what you have to do is essentially jack the bike up. You have to get all of the weight off of this rear tire so you can start working on it. But if you're on the trail, you only have like two options. You can either lay your bike on its side, uh, which I don't recommend. You can uh, prop your bike up on something like a rock or a log, um, but that's also really not too safe. And then there's a different option where you can have like a like a, a trail stand like this. Um, I made mine on my own, but there are plenty of people who make um, quality snap jacks or whatever like that, or the Enduro Star Trail Stand. Um, but I just made my own. Um, this is kind of like the safest of the three ways to do it, but it's just something that you have to do to get access to your rear tire. So uh, this just slips on under uh, the opposite side of your, of your bike, and it's secured on by one strap. The other strap secures your brake, and then a bungee cord secures um, the, the stand to your kickstand on the opposite side of the bike. Before I jack my bike up, I'm gonna try to break my axle nut loose. For that, I'll need a 19 for the, um, for the clutch control side of the bike, and I'll need a 22 for the brake control side of the bike. Uh, the crappy thing is, is when Yamaha gives you their toolkit, the 19 and the 22 are in the same freaking wrench. So how are you supposed to change a tire if they give you this and you can only work on one side of the bike at one time? So that's why I have a Stockton insert. I'm, I'm sorry about that. That's just like kind of ridiculous if you ask me. But anyways, that's why I have the Stockton insert one. Um, it has a 22 insert on there so I can use it on this side and then I can use the little stubby guy for the 19 on the opposite side. All right, so now that it's loose, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the trail stand. In order to keep the bike from moving as much as possible, I'm going to go ahead and lock my steering column into the left-hand position, and I'm going to lock up my brake using a strap. I'm just gonna wrap a strap around it so that when I'm working on this thing, it's less likely to twist and then roll and then have a mistake. So as simple as it looks, I just have a black strap wrapped around my brake. So the black strap looks like this. It just has like a double uh, a double buckle that you have to run loosely through there. Sorry, my birds are freaking out. But you can use electrical tape or whatever to secure your brake so your bike doesn't move. It's simple, but it works. So now what I've got to do is I've got to get this jack underneath my, um, where's that? Underneath my bike somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to do it right here, right where my foot peg attaches to my bike, the bar that goes straight across. So I'm going to make sure that I don't get pinched, and I'm going to push my bike a little bit, a little over, and as soon as it starts to get under there, I'm just going to keep pushing. 
until I can get this thing as vertical as possible. So now my wheel is actually free, but I still have to secure this and I still want to get a little bit more space under there because when I have a fully fixed tire, it's going to be wider in diameter than a flat tire, if that makes sense. So in order to secure this, what I do is I just use a red bungee strap and I go from one side of the bike to the other. All right, so what I got to do is wrap this bungee around the bottom of the leg and then secure it to the opposite part of my kickstand. So that way when the bike is starting to lift or rock or anything, if anything, the bungee cord is going to pull the trail stand towards the kickstand of the bike, making it safer. So the only way this will hopefully, the, hopefully the only way this thing will slip out is if it gets completely unloaded, if that makes sense. All right, so now that I have this thing secured, I'm going to run another strap um, through its anchoring point. So that is right here and over. And then I'm just gonna secure this strap onto there. It's pretty simple, but it's effective. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So let me go ahead and show you that securing strap. I know it's not pretty, but it'll do. So we have the trail stand right there, and then we have the the uh, the strap, and then we have that that cross member right there. So essentially, it just goes up and over it. Now that this thing's fully jacked up and secured, I can go ahead and start lifting the bike up using a uh, a wrench. This part takes a while, but essentially what this does is it just extends a bolt that runs through the center of the, the trail stand. And I don't have to get it up too far, but I like to have it as high up as I possibly can just in case, just so I have that little extra bit of space to work with. So as you can see, this center portion is actually getting longer. Does that make sense? So I think that should be good. So now let's see how much room we have off of the ground on our tire from that jack. So we have about an inch of clearance. Does that make sense? About an inch right there. So our tire spins freely. We're all good to go now. Now we can actually uh, pull off our, our rear tire. All right, so since I already loosened these, I should be able to just untighten them by hand. Well, untighten them, loosen them. So. Let's remember the order. It goes axle bolt or axle nut. Um, then it goes the washer. So I can go ahead and toss those on the ground in order. And then it goes the snail adjuster after the washer. And then we should be able to pull our axle nut all the way out, or axle bolts all the way out. Or axle, geez, my words. What you heard roll out is actually my um, my wheel bearing spacer. So that goes on the inside of the axle, not inside of the axle, but on the inside of the swing arm, on the um, on the chain side of the bike. And now what I have to do is get my chain off of that sprocket. So what I can do is just pull back and then lift it off, and then I can roll my your tire off and make sure you don't damage your caliper or anything like that it should just sit kind of tight right there and then we can roll the sucker out 